Good. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm doing fine. Thanks. How about you? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Uh, congratulations on your win and on your goal. Thank you. I'm sure your your fans are really happy and they are happy with your performance. Keep it up. Keep it up. Okay, Goswe. Um, we're gonna we're gonna start. We're gonna take it. At this moment, you're playing in uh in Israel, right? Yeah. Okay. So can you please tell us who is Goswe? Those those of us that don't know you, who who is Goswe? Um, Goswe is a a young guy from Ghana, mm -hmm. to be specific from Accra. Yeah. Um, 26 years of age, um, and currently playing for Maccabi Haifa. Okay. The... Yeah. Nice, nice, nice. So, uh, what 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 tribe are you from in Ghana? I'm an Ewe. Oh, Madakuku, Madakuku, Good, good, good. That's the only, that's the only ever I know. Nice, yeah. nice, nice. So, Gosh, uh, tell us how was it like to to join a, a big club like uh, Makaimi Haifa in Israel? I think it's a it's a pleasure to join uh, Makabi Haifa, yeah. like um, one of the best and uh, the biggest club in Israel, um, with a uh, good talent young and experienced players at all um good coaching staff the fans it's just uh, amazing to be here and i like it so far nice 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 obviously i i do know uh maccabi high far back in the days uh they've they've actually won i think 12 12 championship or 13 championship in Israel, and uh they've they've played in the europa and I think Champions League. So yeah, it's a it's a big club. It's a big club. Did you did you know anything about about the club itself before joining? Actually, uh, to be honest, no. But um, when I had the idea that they were interested, yeah. Then um, I read and um, checked a lot about the club. Okay. The background and all that, mm -hmm. and uh, it was interesting. Um, that's why I decided to come here. Oh okay, okay, okay. Uh, that's good. I think um it's a it's a good league as well. You know, Israel is 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 uh it's a good league you can progress from there. You've seen players that have come from Israel League to, to top league yeah. in Europe. So yeah, I think uh it's it's actually a good step for you to, yeah. to be playing in the top level in Europe. How how is life like in Israel? Tell us how life is. Obviously the pandemic came or we are in a period of pandemic how is life in israel like during this pandemic uh, actually it hasn't been um, easy when i came when i came to israel there was um, a lockdown mm. like uh, there was nothing was really open it's only the um, grocery shopping that you yeah. can go to, can go to anywhere so like i'm always indoors and uh, I can't even go out for a walk or anything like that, you know. It was um, difficult to be here, like, uh, during the first period. But now, things are getting better, so I can uh, go out for a walk and all this. So, it's getting better and better. So, I'm just looking forward for everything to be normal again, so I can um, explore Israel, you know, and uh, get, like, um, experience, get to know more things. And, you know, I'm a Christian. As well, and uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So I want to visit um, Jerusalem, Bethlehem, and all this to know more. So I'm just looking forward and uh, hoping everything gets back to normal, so I can experience more. Oh, nice, nice, nice. So you've not, you've not, have you tasted any any Ghanaian food since you've been there? Like any fufu, wache, or yeah, um, I think it's been uh, three weeks or a month ago. Okay. On Obwate. He's also from Ghana. Oh, okay, he, okay, okay. He played in the yeah, club. Yeah. Uh, Wafa. Wafa, yeah, yeah. And uh, I met him. 
he also plays here. So I met him and he introduced uh, his Ghanaian family to me. Mm -hmm. So like uh, Ghanaian food for all the African players here in um, Israel. Okay. So then I got hooked up by him. So I get fufu, wache, jollof rice, everything I want. So wow, I feel so like you... I'm right now in. The... <laughs> so you are not actually missing anything, anything from Ghana because you have all the food and stuff. Yeah, I no, just no, my, only my no family. Missing. No missing cocoa vanilla or like mango. Ah. Or... <laughs> no, no, yeah. No, yeah. Oh, no. nice, nice, nice. Yeah. Yeah, do you, do you have any, any, any like love life? Are you single? Are you married? Or are you, you struggling as always? Are the girls, you know, in your DM making you feel like a big player? Because obviously you play for Maccabi. So. <laughs> yeah, actually, um, I've been single for a long time. Okay, okay. Uh, actually, I've met someone. Yeah. Like, seen at the moment. Uh huh. So, yeah, that's what I can say for now. I can go into more details. <laughs> okay, okay. Right at the moment, yeah. Well, girls on here, if you want to slide in, you can slide in, but you're, well, you're, you're on your own. All right, <laughs> girls, you um. In 2013, you signed yeah. for Man City mm. at the age of 18. Man City came calling. Yeah. What yeah. was going on in your head when you heard that uh, Man City wanted to sign me? <laughs> you already know. And I know every every young guy, every young um, football player from Africa, not only Africa, Europe as well. When you hear um, a good news like that, like a big club wants you. There's no way you're gonna say no, especially when you're young, you know. Mm, mm, mm. When you're young and it's like it's your way to play professional football. Yeah. Then there's um any way you're gonna adapt signing for a big club like Manchester City. So actually it was unbelievable. I couldn't I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe uh, actually Manchester, uh, Manchester City wanted to give me a contract, professional contract. So it was um, a great feeling, yeah. Well, that was that was a, a big move. That was a big move. Uh, I guess uh, your family and everybody was happy. And did you did you ever get the chance to train with the with the first team? Yeah, uh, a few times. Got the chance to train with the first team a few times. Okay. Well, like, what, what which players did you train with when you when I you were there? trained with uh, uh, Aguero, Yaya Toure, Adam Johnson. Um, Silver, okay, okay, Richard, uh, Mika Richard, yep, 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 uh, um, b -b 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 Joe Hart, Joe Hart, yep, yeah, yeah, Balotelli. Oh, Balotelli was there when you trained, yeah, wow. yeah, that was in 2012, yeah, 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 both when Balotelli was there, mm, mm, mm. so a lot, a lot, I can keep on mentioning, but no need to mention. Money. Yeah, yeah, that, that was actually a big thing. And uh, how was the experience like? Did you tell us, did you get any chance to, to clean their football shoes? Or <laughs> Obviously, you train with Balotelli and all these guys who would like to, you know, be under their wings. How, how was it? No, but I don't like to get a chance to clean their shoes, but, you know, it's, the feeling was different. You know, mm -hmm. like, I, I get surprised whenever I go down to current to train with them yeah but yeah. with the um, second team and the u18s mm -hmm, mm -hmm. sometimes get a chance so when you train with the second team it's like they have um the same facilities as the training the same fast as the first team yeah so yeah them like every time and when you go for lunch also so it was it's like i i didn't really talk to most of the players but mm -hmm. i with um the um, color Cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, a really nice guy, especially when you see um, when these these African young guys chasing their yeah. dream. Yeah, Always yeah, yeah. Ice, mm -hmm. and all that. So it was great feeling. Like I didn't really talk to most of the players, but I still got this uh, motivation seeing um, just seeing them. Yep, yep, just yep. Them being at the top level and the quality mm -hmm. of training gives me a lot of uh, motivation. You know, so it was it was good. 
that's really nice that's nice that's nice i i guess you did you did uh learn a lot from them and uh you've progressed to to become a better player and uh to be actually playing for Maccabi Haifa obviously it tells how how hard work you've been you've been putting in and um yeah so like um in terms of your your education background how how was it before you you joined right to dream obviously i know you did join right to dream how was your education background like actually i was i was in school mm -hmm. um before i joined right to dream i was in i don't know only Af uh, the africans who understand this i was in uh, jhs yep yeah i'll write, write my bc hmm. then um i got these trials right yep. to trials. but before that i wasn't i never had any interest for school you know i never okay. like go to school it's more like uh, football every day it's like football in my mind so i was like under under a truant in school mm -hmm. an hour of school every single day before end of school just to play football so i never really wanted to go to school i just wanted to make it as a professional football player but the advice i always get from my dad mm -hmm. okay if you don't if you want to be a soccer player like professional soccer player yeah yeah, yeah. the most thing is to be able to speak good english yeah you know? go to school learn a lot before you can because if you get interviews and you're on the camera saying you know you know you know yeah you know. yeah 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 so most importantly it's gonna be your english your english speaking so english actually was my favorite um subject in school okay uh, okay like in the top five of english but apart from english <laughs> apart from english i guess i guess you were at the bottom in every every subject because after I, I just saw your sister just commented he never liked school <laughs> i'm not surprised i'm not surprised um yeah obviously most most as footballers we, we we really don't uh, take the school that serious when we are coming up but the moment we, when we grow up we we understand how serious it is to to have education in your life because it's it's very very important as well so when you moved to Man City mm. in 2013, you were loaned straight to 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 Sweden, in Jugard. Yeah. Now tell us how was it when you came to Jugard in Stockholm? Um, it was really tough. Mm -hmm. It was um, January, and you know it was um, really cold. Yep. In um Sweden, going mm. every day, and I was 18 non um experience mm. with cooking like everything it was it was really tough but i had um you see chipsa yep yep yeah daniel amate mm. he um helped me you know I, okay actually i was the same age as daniel amate amate yeah 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 we struggling you know but chipsa was the main man mm. so we are we are okay every day so it was tough like taking care of myself mm. uh, and also the football was tough for me like you know because i was 18 different mm. environment i have to work really hard yeah. to get a um, system so the first year wasn't um, really easy for me but through hard work and all that was yeah i succeeded so you were in, you were living in Stockholm, big mm. capital, big city, everywhere was popping. Mm. I bet you you went to few nightclubs and that. How was the girls like in in, in Stockholm? Actually, to be honest, <laughs> I only went out one time. That was uh, end of the season mm -hmm. when the whole team has to go out and celebrate. Yeah. That was the only time I went out. Mm. When I was eighteen. And I didn't really know. And you see, chips are it's not about that life. Yep, it's yep, like yep. Who want to go out and party? And Daniel Amate didn't know anywhere as well. And uh, in the team, 
it's more like an um, experienced player, you know. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm actually I'm not this guy who mingles a lot with a um, lot of people. I'm more like um, reserved, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. all the time be on my own, be indoors. Mm. So I don't, I didn't really um, get to close with the players after football. Yeah. When I'm home, if you have a um, day off, I go to the city center, maybe to buy one or two things. Yeah. Come back home. So I was like this the whole time for one year in Stockholm. Wow. For one year in Stockholm. As a footballer, what are the struggling when you move to a new environment? And you're living by yourself. What's the struggle? You were 18, mm -hmm. fresh in, in, in Sweden, fresh in Stockholm, new club. What was the struggle that you were facing? Uh, because, uh, like I said, with the oh. cooking and all this, my nutrition, uh, like my diet was yep. in a good. Like, it was uh, really poor. Mm. So I didn't really have anyone to guide me, you know. This okay. is what you have to do. This is the time you have to sleep, mm. you know. For me, I'm more like a, a night person. I yep. really sleep early mm -hmm. in hours. Like it was really bad. But yep. I sleep really late, wake up every morning tired. And I think that's going to be an advice for the young guys coming up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They get someone to help them with their nutrition yep. and like time to go to bed, all this. So that was the most um, toughest part for me in the Sweden when I was there. Yeah, I think uh, every every footballer will probably or has experienced that sort of uh, challenge. Um, when you look at even the top players, when they move to other countries, they do struggle in their first or second year. And just like you said, like um, in terms of nutrition and diet and stuff, you know, I think footballers have to have to take it serious because resting is is very important for the body, you know. So it's it's actually good for for clubs to also like monitor young players when they move to 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 a new environment, you know. That would be something for 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 the players to to actually relax and just focus in in football, you know. So. And how did you did you you did play like few games for for Jew Garden? How how was the tempo? A lot of games. Yeah. Uh, no, I I talked to the players. I yeah. just oh Yusuf Chips was um advising me a lot. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, relax. You no, know, not to panic. Mm -hmm. And actually, I wasn't playing when I was there when the first um, coach was there. The coach that took alone yep yep because there i wasn't really playing i'm always um on the bench yep yeah but not getting a chance to play so a new coach came in and um my first game was against helsingborg yeah Ooh. that was my <laughs> debut in the yeah, yeah. in that game and um it changed everything since then um, i was in the first 11 playing every game and uh, I felt I felt more matured when mm -hmm, I started mm -hmm. I think most of the time it's more about the playing time and building confidence you know? yep. so when I built this um, confidence then I felt like okay now I can uh, do my thing but, yeah and everything fell in place so after the season in in, in uh, Ugodin Obviously, you went back to Man City. Uh, Jugodi wanted you back, but you ended up in fucking Berry in Sweden, another loan spell. What was the difference between fucking Berry and uh, Jugodi in terms of the setup and how the club was, was run? Actually, uh, the big difference was the facilities. Okay. Um, the coaching staff also. Mm -hmm. In Jordan, it was you know you got in a big club in um, yep. so everything is run differently compared mm -hmm. to more clubs, and I think that's normal in um, every football team yep. around yep. the world. Yeah. And in Falkenberg, I know they didn't have the best facilities, but 
yeah, I, I liked it there as well. But, you know, the football was different. Mm -hmm. The reason why I actually went to Falkenberg and I didn't stay at U Garden was because when I was at U Garden, I was playing as a left wing. Oh, okay, but okay. He signed me purposely for a striker. A striker. I was playing as a striker. And uh, U Garden wanted me back. But Man City was like, okay, if he's going to come back, then he has to play as a striker. Okay. And okay. also, okay. the coach sees me more like a winger because with, uh, with my speed. Mm, mm. And uh, Man City also wanted to play as a striker. For me, I didn't have a problem, you know, but I was young. I can really make a decision. I felt yeah. like they know better than I do. This was mm -hmm. the they me for. So um, you got to have like a lot of strikers. Yeah. And I wanted to go back there because I liked it on the wing. Mm. Because when I was playing for my local team before going to Right to Dream, I was playing. Yeah. At okay, okay. When I went to Right to Dream, then I became a like a striker. Then uh, signed for Man City. So when I went to Falkenberg, like they had the option to play me as a as a striker. As a striker. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So then Man City took the option for me to go down there. Yeah. Oh, nice, nice. But would you would you would you say your favorite position is uh, a striker? Or no, winger. You, that's your favorite position that's, playing from the wings. Yeah, that's the position I've played uh, almost my whole career. Oh, okay. Okay, nice, nice. And the funny part is, in the two two thousand and fourteen two thousand fifteen season, you you actually scored the winner against your former club, Joe Gordon. Yeah. How tell us how how was the feeling? Did you even celebrate when you scored? No, <laughs> of course not. I I couldn't celebrate because uh, you got in was uh, my first professional club, mm. and like they treated me really nice. Yeah, you know I felt at home when I got there. So scoring against them, it was show, like and celebrating is gonna be disrespectful. You know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So even though I really wanted to celebrate so bad because it was the last minute goal and the winner. You know, yeah, 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 yeah. So bad. But after scoring, when the players ran to me and all that, after I was like, nah, I need to do something. Like the funny thing was uh, after, I think it was after 75 minutes or something like that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I was playing under Henrik Larsson, former Manchester former United. Former Manchester United, yeah, yeah, yeah. So he said to me, I went down to the line, took uh, water. Uh -huh. Then he said to me, keep going. You're going to change the game. You're going to make the difference. Wow. Or in the game. I was like, okay. You know, so I did in the last minute. So after celebrating with the players, then I ran down to him to hug him. And uh, it, was, it was a great feeling. I couldn't sleep that night, you know. I was, I was so happy. It was, it was crazy. Wow, 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 wow! That that night, I bet you had couple, you know, blondies around you trying giving you a, a nice massage, and that he's got the winner. Come on! <laughs> and you're gonna say something like that, but <laughs> okay. You know, I was uh, a let's... good boy. I was a good boy. I'm still a good boy. <laughs> Uh, yeah, every boy, everyone is a good boy. We all say that, but it is what it is, you know. <laughs> okay, so tell us what's your interest outside football. What do you like doing outside football apart from like not being on the pitch or not training? What was your interest? Like I said earlier on, like, I'm more like a reserve person in the mm -hmm. so I play uh, FIFA. Okay. Yeah. I love to play golf as well. So, you know, if I get the chance, I will, you know, love to play. I love wow. golf. And I have a guy here. Mm -hmm. He also likes to play. And he already told me when it's back to normal, we can go play. But apart from football, I'm mostly at home watching movies and, uh, yeah, watching funny videos on YouTube, fall asleep, wake up. So I don't really have any interest. Okay, okay. Well, do you, are you trying? Are you trying to to represent Ghana in golf after football? <laughs> <laughs> but you know where 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 I grew up? It's either golf or football. Okay, 
Yeah, so, okay. were you were you not good enough in playing golf or what? No, I chose football was my first, you know. I I never saw myself playing a uh, professional to be a professional golfer. I was okay. all to football. That's, I, you actually made the the the, the record choice because I don't think you you can be swing. And the opportunity, like you know, it's in Africa. Even football opportunities are very high. So yeah, yep. in golf, uh huh. You know, where am I gonna get the chance to play? Nah, I don't. I don't really see myself in that area. In that area. Oh, okay, okay. Was in two, you moved to Notchland. That was 2016. 2016, you moved to Notchland. Yeah. In a permanent deal. Mm. Why Notchland? Because I'm asking why Notchland. Obviously, there was a few rumor that there was uh, interest in Sweden and other countries, but Notchland came in and then you went straight to Notchland. Why Notchland? What did you see? Yeah, because uh, before I went to Notchland, you know, sometimes you have to follow your instincts. Yeah. So uh, the reason why I actually went to Notchland was because they were young players mm. and um, right to dream like was part of the project yep yeah so i knew and when i was out you've been there yourself yep you know the kind of um, advice we get mm. the guidelines we've got from right to dream yeah so it was more like um right to dream project yep so this is gonna be the best time in my career because um then i know i'm back with the right to dream family whereby they guide me like uh, on the right track mm -hmm. help me make um, the right decision yeah and to make sure i have um, a better career because that's what they try to do all these times when mm -hmm. we were back mm -hmm. in the academy to have um, a good career so i knew they're gonna give me the opportunity again like to build me up to be a person and a better um, soccer player in the future so that was the main reason why I chose FC Northland. Okay, okay, yeah. Um, right to Dream actually um, has done a lot for for African players, and uh, actually they're doing a good job in, in Denmark, blending the Ghanaian players with the Danish and uh, other country players. And I think um, they're actually giving opportunity to everyone. Like it doesn't matter where you're from, you. If you have the the talent, then they will give you the the right to dream, you know. So, yeah. And then, uh, can you tell us how was the the league like in Denmark compared to to Sweden? For me, I rate the league better uh, in um, Denmark than okay. Sweden. I think it's um, the quality yeah. is um, a bit higher yeah. than um, Sweden. To my opinion, that's what I think. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think moving to Denmark has been the best time in my career. Okay. Where my career actually started, you know. Then I felt more like a, a professional player. Okay. Getting after my dream. Mm -hmm. I had um, guys who were the, like on the same level as me, mm -hmm. like age, age group, like uh, trying to achieve something better. Yeah. You know, and um, in Northland also, it's like there are a lot of scouts um, coming down to watch games. Mm, mm. So it's more about playing for the club and also playing for yourself to yep. make it better to get the chance to go out. You know, so the level in uh, I think it was better than um, Sweden in terms of football and um, being professional. Okay, okay, okay. That's nice. And um. When we when we come outside football, like um, what sort of what sort of movies are you into? Do you watch any movies? Do you read any book? Like, what do yeah. you do? What do you do on your free on your free uh, day? On a day off, I can tell you, on a day off, I don't really go out. I don't. Sometimes I don't even go out to get fresh air. I'm uh, indoors, and uh, you know these funny guys. 
videos, this yeah, guy yeah. called Likey. Yeah, yeah. Right. And, you know, I loved watching him. So it's like just uh, laying the sofa, watch this, and maybe when I'm a bit tired of that, then I go on Netflix and try to find a, a good movie. I finished um, Vikings, the series on Netflix. Yep, yep, yep. yep. I love to watch a um, good series as well. So, yeah. Nice, nice. In 2016-2017 season, you scored nine goals for for FC Notchland, right? Yeah. Probably that was your best season, I would say. Oh. Right? What, as a footballer, what made you to be that good that particular season? I think uh, having the right people around you. Mm. And I had the right people around me. And uh, having a, a coach staff that also believe in your mm -hmm. so I saw everyone believed in me. Even though when I, I first went there, it was a really tough first six months. Yep. I, I was only playing in the second team. Okay, okay. I need to get my fitness back and uh, get my mood on. Mm. So it was um, really tough when I went there. But later, like, um, things changed. So there's this thing about me. It's like uh, I don't get a chance from the first minute. Yep. But once I get my chance, I always take it. And it yep. was, was the same with uh, FC Nordschland. Yeah. Remember, I was, uh, when I was in playing, yep. because I felt like the guys I'm playing with, they are on the same age and same level as me. Mm -hmm. So I was playing. Yeah. I was young then, so it's like, I just want to play. No, I wasn't thinking about, is the coach, I have to respect that. Mm -hmm. I was more like, I want to play, let me play. You know, yeah. so I was actually fighting to go on loan because I needed okay. time, and uh, they actually agreed to send me on loan. Mm -hmm. Like uh, one of the wingers got injured. Wow! Then I, <laughs> it's this day I love. So one of the wingers got injured. Uh -huh. So then the coach has no other choice. No other choice. And the uh, good thing was when I was playing the second team, I scored in every game. Mm, mm. I score assists every game. So then, uh, when the winger got in, the coach had no option. So I was the option. So the coach told me, okay, you're going to start tomorrow. You know? And I came the next day, game day, and uh, we were down 1-0. And I equalized. And so after that, game everything changed mm, mm, mm. so they don't want to take me on loan anymore Almost anymore you know so every day then i get to play like scoring goals and all that and yeah that that was the start of my career like my success in um it's not so just like you said previously that your opinion you think the danish league is better than the swedish league mm. Do you think as a player, is it important to always make sure you get playing time or you go on loan to get playing time? Because obviously, there are some players that they don't understand the loan system. So you've been in that situation or you've been in that situation before. What advice would you give the young ones when they are being sent on loan? Uh, for me, I think it's all power of football, but, you know, I can say my part, but yeah. humans, we are, we are all and yeah. we yeah. think different. We all mm. have different uh, perspectives. So for me, back then, I would say I want to go on loan. Yeah. Because then I wanted to play. But also, sometimes you have to... Thing, can I stay and fight? Yep. But you have to know the situation. You know, if you're gonna be uh, next choice, because every position you have two, two, three players. Yep. 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 So you have to know, like, uh, am I, am I, should I go on loan or should mm -hmm. I stay and fight? Yeah. But before you 
by that you have to make sure you're gonna play if the first choice is not playing mm. or you have to before you also go on loan you speak to the coach you know yeah. you have to talk to the coach what he thinks about what are your like um what, what um how do you say i don't know how to put this but what, what was the thought about him like of you like if you're gonna play or not or what does he think yeah, yeah, yeah. They have to give you his um, opinion mm, mm, on mm. what he thinks about you. Mm. If it's better, go on loan. So yeah. for me, the decision is the coach. If the coach says, okay, I think you're not part of my plan, mm. like I have other players, yep. then it's uh, better you go on, uh, on, on a loan. Yeah. Well, yeah. I know sometimes when you go on loan, it's either you go to like you go a step back mm. or a step up. Yeah, you know sometimes it's uh, and it was the same way when I was playing Northland. Yep. The new coach didn't like me, didn't want me. Mm. Wow. You know, so I had uh, interest from other clubs, mm. and then I to Germany to play in um, second Bundesliga, yep. and the level in Bundesliga is higher than um, Denmark first first league. And I went there. I had a um, good time. Yep. And it's it also changed a little bit. So sometimes it's about the coach, what the coach thinks about you. And also, people are different. Some people like to stay and prove uh, that they are better. So for me, the advice is like just follow your instincts. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like just follow what you feel like doing, what you think is best for you. Because at the end of the day, if I tell you to do this and you do exactly what I tell you and it doesn't work out, yep. the day you're going to bet me. So for me, when I advise young guys, I always say, to me, I think this is better. But the person to make the decision is you. It's you, yep, yeah. Follow like, your instincts, like if you think this is better for you, that's because I don't want you to come back at the end of the day and be like, it was your fault, I did this. <laughs> The advice is like, <laughs> do what you feel like doing. Don't let people make decisions for you. For you, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Now you've you've actually uh, been to some some few countries: Sweden, Denmark, uh, Germany. You are now in Israel. What do you think footballers actually need when they are going around? What do they need for them to feel at home? Because you, you, you get to a certain country and you are bored. After football, you don't have life. After training or after a game, you are just home. What do you think footballers need to do? Is there something footballers need to do aside playing games and training? Uh, I think for me, it's more about being yourself. Yeah being uh, humble yeah being nice and uh, have good um, good uh, relationship with um, the club yep. your family, no matter what even if they treat you bad or maybe you don't play like or maybe you your expectations were high before mm -hmm. and it wasn't the same yeah no matter what you still I need to have good um, relationship with the players, coaching staff, even friends that you're gonna meet in uh, those countries. Mm, mm. Never know where you're gonna get your next help from. Maybe yeah. it doesn't go well for you. Maybe because you've been uh, nice to other, yep. they could easily maybe find something else for you. Yeah, yeah. You know, so life is like what goes around comes around. Comes around. Yeah, yeah, so I agree. Have to be humble and uh, have good relationships mm. with like whoever or like whatever you're going through, like people that are around you trying to help you. And you know, also like there are people who sometimes doesn't want your success. Yep, yep, Want yep. to bring you down and all this. For me, I I see this a lot of times, mm -hmm. but sorry, because I'm a different person. I'm a nice person, and for yeah. me, I'm gonna do you good. 
And if you're gonna pay me back with a buy, then it's up to you. Because for me, I believe doing good, you always protect it. You know, like nothing bad could happen to you. People thinking negative things about you. Mm. So it's all about having good relationship and being respectful. Yeah, I think uh, it's, it's, it's actually uh, a good, valid point. And I think um, one thing I think the young footballers or us should do is try and get more education, you know, read yeah. books. There's a lot of online courses, mm. like we have to get on it because after training or after game, we actually have a... Uh, time for ourselves for us to 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 do something mm. with our life not just football oh. you know when you look at the retired players like michael asian otoado like all these top top players they most have... of them are into coaches most of them are into pandit most yeah. of them are into you mm. know real estate and stuff so i think it's about time like Footballers also do take the opportunity during their their rest days or when they have any free time. Mm. Um, you 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 had your call up for the national team, the Ghana national team in yeah. 2017. Mm. You were getting ready to to go to the African Cup of Nation. Mm. How was the feeling like? And then when you got there, with the the players. Didi, are you a free aqua? You just named them. How was the atmosphere? How were you received? Okay, uh, when I first got there, you know, if you're not playing in, um, in Ghana, it's, you know, when you're not playing like the biggest league. Yeah. Like people don't really, really like know who you are. Mm. So they see you playing the national team or training with the national team and they see mm. you. And they'll be like, who is this guy? Where does he play? Mm -hmm. when, when I first got to the national team camp mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the first time, when I first got there, it was like, the crowd was amazing. Like, it was love. Uh, they loved it. People, you know, they, lo they wow. just, the Black Star players. So I was a little bit nervous, even though I've been to, I've been in the situations like that. Mm -hmm. but, Nervous, because you know you already know Ghanaians. When yeah, you're, yeah, yeah, yeah. when you act, they are gonna go crazy on you. That was a little bit nervous, but I had uh, Majid worries. I had yep. David, so they they were like you know they make me feel good. Mm, mm, so mm. I was I was a little bit like when I saw them, I was you know a little bit calm, and I had my first train was really good, very yep. impressive. And um, Avram Grant was impressive. And um, the fans, after that training, you know, pictures, people asking, hey, where do you play? I never saw you in the Black Stars and all yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I really had a good time. Like, I trained with them until the AFCON before they traveled. And all my trainings were, like, top. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, people were happy with my performance. And people text me from nowhere, Facebook and all that. Mm -hmm. I pray you go with the team to the after. But, you know, it, it's football. Things happen in the way it happens. You have to take it like that. You have to take it in a good faith. But then, yeah, I didn't get... But then I didn't get the chance to travel to, to, to the AFCON. Yeah. Af but I was, I was... I felt blessed to be, mm. to be there with the national team. So do you do you do you see yourself with that experience? Obviously, it's been in in two thousand and seventeen. Uh, it's been quite some long time. Yeah. Do you see yourself getting back in the national team one day? Yeah, I do. Because uh, after the first call up in twenty seventeen, mm. I go another call up to travel with the team to the states for okay. friends and also for the qualification. Um, mm. I've got qualification against Ethiopia. Yeah. But unlucky for me, I got injured the mm. week before. So I couldn't um, travel like down to meet the team. Mm -hmm. But all hope are not lost. I, I still believe because 
for me, uh, there's this thing where there is life, there is hope. There is hope. Yeah, sure, you sure. Life, you have hope. It doesn't matter your age. It doesn't matter where you play. But if it's your, so for me, I just believe. But I don't really think about the national team. I'm mm. at the moment, you know, to get, um, work hard, get my playing time here, get a good time with the team down here. And uh, everything else is going to fall in place once you progress, you know. So, for me, I believe good things will happen. We have we have uh, Derek Boat in a legend, a legend, a legend for the for the national team. Uh, he's, he's a mentor to lots of Ghanaian players. We, we actually look up to him. He's, uh, yeah. he's played all over. I would say all over and... Um, you know, he's saying, of course, you 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 will come back and you are a star. So the for big, him, for him big. rating you, that means uh, you have a, a lot on your shoulders to to get back to the to the national team. Big yourself up, uh, Derek Barton. Um, us. So, are you now thinking mm. what to do after football? Because this one thing. I've realized that most footballers don't really see how important it is until they are getting closer to their end of their career. Then they start to think about what do I want to do after football? Now you are very active. You are playing. You're scoring goals. What's going on in your head after football? Actually, I've already planned on uh, what to do. And... Um... I want to be like uh, not like an agent, like scout agent, you know, yeah. Yeah. like mostly to help um, players around the world, especially African players, because the opportunity in uh, Africa is um, really low, yeah. and more more of um, those people who are gonna you know try to go around mm. find good talent. Yeah. So. Like I mentioned in the first um, time, when you asked me what footballers have to do, yeah, yeah, uh, that's what I meant. I like having good relations with the clubs mm. and people you meet in your life. Mm. Mm. So if I really want to help players from Africa, yeah, go around to help play. If I don't have a relationship with the clubs that I played for or the players that head coaches have uh, played under, if mm. I don't relationship with them how am i gonna be able to help those players yep you know so i need to build this um relationship relationship mm. uh, clubs and the coaches so when i'm done with football and i want to help young players yeah so i already know okay i have this coach i have this guy to talk to he what he can do mm -hmm. you know help me to like uh, make this work like, yep. Work. So my my um, dream after football is uh, to go back to Africa, yep. and, um, young players to uh, if their dream like I did. Yeah, I think um, this is one thing uh, every footballer has to actually think about it. What you want to do after football, because it's out there. People, most people do think that you know football players. After our career, then we don't have anything to do. Well, it could be true because of what has happened to previous ex-players, you know. Yeah. So I think this platform is 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 gonna bring us together to also think outside the box, you yeah. know, because football can be a long career, it can be a short career through injury. Yeah. You know, so it's always gonna be good to have something as a second choice or backup. Yeah. So when you're done with football, you know, you can you can do something for yourself, just like you say, for your community, for Ghana and stuff. So, yeah, I think I do agree with you. And um, now let's go to Germany. You mentioned that uh, the second Buddhist Liga is uh, much better than the Danish top league. Mm. Is it the understanding of the game, the pace of the game, or the tactical side, like 
tell us more about i about think it, it. it's more like everything because you know we have a uh, first bundesliga player playing in the second bundesliga yeah coming down from the bundesliga yeah the second bundesliga more experience um they know a lot about the game mm -hmm, mm -hmm. everything everything in the game in germany second bundesliga is a uh, totally different yeah to german uh, danish league yeah the quality mm -hmm. and uh yeah it's low better and i like actually i like german football because of yep. the pace you know the mm -hmm. slow uh pace in the game mm. like off running you know it's like tempo you go yep. up and I love football like this i love it when it's like <clears throat> more tempo mm -hmm. and no time to rest mm -hmm. you know, when you're a fast player a quick player you always yeah. want them. when the game is like slow then it's like uh you know but when it's like there's a lot of tempo then you feel like yeah so comparing that to denmark i think denmark is a place like a league that's good for young players okay to start their career mm -hmm. so in the second bonus league if you're not experienced with like low game time mm -hmm. like a bit difficult and of course second bonus league team can get a young player who is 89 but then the playing playing is going to be a little bit different than you staying in Denmark. yeah yep. they bore you for like a backup mm -hmm. because then in um, the second bonus league is more like experience yeah uh, you know law of qualities also mm. Mm. Uh, it's like there's a lot of uh things like expected from you mm. Mm. we have mm. to in the first minute wow so it's all like yeah you have to be on the front foot all the time so, yeah, yeah i've i've seen i've seen uh some actually i've seen quite a good players from from sweden you know that have moved to the to second uh, bundesliga like emil fushberg he used to play for um uh, malmo here he went to red bull when they were in second bundesliga so i guess uh, what you are saying is true because you've tasted both league and you've seen the quality of the of the league i think somebody just asked you um do you have a woman in your life i think the girls are ready to slide in in your dm if you can <laughs> Up for them uh, yeah unfortunately no fortunately sorry fortunately i'm seeing someone at the moment like <laughs> yeah, your, so, your, your girl is gonna kill you man <laughs> <laughs> you just you just said no <laughs> i hope i i hope she's watching you now <laughs> <laughs> okay 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 so yeah people people want to get to know you more people want to get to know you more um when you come to ghana like um during holidays what do what do you do when you're in ghana you already know <laughs> i don't know so, so the audience wants to know that's why we this platform is for the audience not me so the audience want to know when god's way is in ghana during holiday what does he do I see my uh, family, mm -hmm. but uh, it's, I always spend one year in uh, Europe. Yep. Or like, see, I see my family one year. It, mm. I go down to see my family, uh, spend some time with friends. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, every time they are new in um, Ghana going yep. on, so I like around and uh he was going and go to maybe one or two parties just to you know be active have fun and uh yeah just feel my country you know so i mm -hmm. i like everything when i'm in ghana like just uh explore because i only have normally i have two three weeks in ghana yeah yeah so yeah somebody just asked that I've never tried it. <laughs> You've never tried it? No, I've never tried it. What's, what's your favorite food? What's your favorite Ghanaian dish? Fufu. Fufu. And then each ride, they have any like special 
Israel food that you like? Uh, I don't really know the names of the food, but they have they actually have really good food. They got good food. Yeah, yeah, they really do. Okay, okay, okay. Um, guys, yeah, we're talking to Gosway, a professional player in Israel for Maccabi Haifa. You know, he's doing he's doing good. He scored uh, the winner a few days ago. Uh, top striker, future for the national team, Black Stars of Ghana. And um, so what's, what, what's your dream in terms of playing in uh, the top five leagues in the world? Do you see yourself playing in one of these top five leagues in the world, in Italy, in France, in Germany, in uh, England, in Spain? Mm. I like I said before, I always liked uh, German football. Yeah. So, but right now it's you know about it's not really respectful to talk about other things mm -hmm. when you another club. Yeah. You, know, you have to have that respect. So it's now it's like I'm here in Israel, and I have to respect. That. I just have to stay humble and uh, mm. thing. like uh, do what I'm here to do yeah uh, help the team to achieve our um, goal mm -hmm. and uh, then everything is gonna fall in place but then Germany has been like uh, the Bundesliga yep my the league I want to play in because I love I love I love German football the tempo and everything Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, German football is actually uh, very good. Like uh, you see the top players playing there, and now you have a whole lot of English players moving to the German league. So that means it's it's attractive and it's like getting the attention from young players, especially from from England and the rest of the world. Um, one of your fans is asking about a soup, like the recipe for a soup. What soup have you been cooking? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, uh, you know, when I first to Israel, uh -huh. I miss Fufu a lot. So, you know, I have one uh, African guy in the team called yeah. uh -huh. from Cameroon. Yeah. Knew um, this African shop. Mm -hmm. So he took me. Then uh, when we went, okay, I saw palm nut soup like you know the recipe and all the yeah 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 I, thought, I was like oh my and fufu and palm is my favorite mm -hmm. so, wow and i saw fufu as well so i was like oh my god i wish i could prepare this you know then i went back home called my mom and yeah. i was like, oh, i want to prepare palm nut soup so what are the ingredients i need to get make that then uh she told me then i went back to the shop the next day to get all this stuff and i was on a video call with my mom and my little sister mm -hmm. and they were guiding through how to make the soup oh okay okay so okay I, <laughs> I posted the soup like uh in the process you know oh okay 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 and people texting me top top you know top soup and all this and, uh, also like the players try to make fun of it like our captain and uh, some few other guys Asking when am I gonna invite them? Yeah. To try the soup, you know. When am I gonna make the same soup for them? So I think that's uh, what uh, defined me, actually. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I see somebody. Uh, at that, that official said, "Come to us now, one day." You know. Okay. Um. Thank you very much for for tuning in. Um. We're gonna wrap it up very soon. So if you have any question you want me to ask Gosway, you can actually write it down for me to ask him. Uh, we're going to finish up with uh, a little game. Um, Cardi B and <laughs> Cardi B and Lady Gaga, who would you go for? <laughs> Cardi B and Lady Gaga. Let's say <laughs> you have to go, you have to take one to a date. Who would you go for? Of course, Cardi B. <laughs> Cardi B. 
Of course. <laughs> okay. You okay. like those those things, those theories? No, no, not her body, but I think she's beautiful. Okay, okay, okay. 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 I see entry entry laughing there. And um <laughs> Bob, Bob Marley and Lucky Doobie. Who would you, who, whose music would you listen to the whole day? Yeah, Bob Marley. Bob Marley? Yeah. Okay, but you like his vibes. A fan. Are you a Bob Marley fan? No, my dad. Your dad? Oh, okay, 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 okay. That's good. Samini and Kwakesi. Samini. But. Why, why, why Samini? I thought you, you, you like the Martin. <laughs> no, not that madness. <laughs> not that sort of madness. <laughs> that is, that is nice. So, um, as a striker, who have you always looked up to as a striker? Wayne Rooney. Rooney? Yeah. Wow, wow. Top player. Yeah. Top player. That's, that's actually a, a good choice. That's actually a good choice. And, um... When you are on the pitch as a football player, mm. right? What what motivates you to to be very consistent with your game? Wow! Like I think the most uh, motivation I've always got in the game, mm. the because I love what I'm doing. Mm. In my dreams is I was. Um, a kid <clears throat> yep. it's something I really wanted to do mm. so being on the pitch is like I feel like sometimes not always but sometimes in some games you feel like a final game like maybe it's your last game of the yeah. of your career mm. because mm. I always wanted to take every opportunity given yep. the pitch because you never know when it's gonna slip out of your hands you know and this football career is um, really short. Yep, so yep, yep. To enjoy, make the best out of it for uh, the end of my career. Mm -hmm. So what motivates me is uh, uh, just do my thing and do what I'm doing. Yeah. All right, Goswe. Thank you very much for, for coming on the Tele Talk Show. Yeah. We, we really appreciate it. We appreciate your time. And uh, we wish you all the best yeah. in the ongoing season. Uh, we hope you can uh, bang in few goals. Because uh, please, what's the the one advice you would give to every football player, both those up and coming and play people, the ones playing out? Yeah, for me, I'm just gonna say uh, you should stay focused, mm. uh, have the faith, yeah, and, um, keep believing, mm. because. Uh, also, I never thought I'm gonna be in the the position right now. Yeah. So make it to this uh, level. They can also. Mm -hmm. There's nothing um, special about me, or any other football players playing the top. Mm -hmm. So they just have to keep working and keep believing and uh, being humble. Well. Okay. Thank you very much, guys. Um, this is the end of the show for for today. Uh, like I said, thank you, Goswe, for coming on, and um, we wish you all the best. Thank you, everyone who tuned in to Tele Talk Show. We will be working on the episode three very soon. So, everybody have a good weekend, have a good night, and Goswe, have a, a good night as well. And uh, I wish you all the best in your games. Yeah, thanks for uh, thank, thank you for coming to Tele Talk Show. All right, thank you. Okay, bye. bye.